Pussy. Ladies and gentlemen, what's up? I'm Jesse, aka Satire Goat, aka Satire Goat, and welcome back to the channel Satire Goat, where we. You're watching the worst of Netflix, where we find the worst movies on Netflix, and then we rank them in an orderly list from best to worst. So far, we've only reviewed one movie on this series, but we're here with the second. This is the most original series on YouTube. You will not find another series that ranks and gives ratings to bad movies. Not a one. Not this one. Not this one. And certainly not this one. The movie we're covering today, let me tell you guys, it's a good one. It's a real good one. It's called... Flatter. It's a movie directed by, directed by Joe Dante. Joe Dante did this? Gremlins? Piranha? Dude, what the fuck? Man, you, you were big. Why are you doing 30-minute TV show-length B-movies now, dude? You directed two of the best campy horror movies of all time, and now you're in a movie with... Corey Feldman? Oh, that changes things. You guys know who Corey Feldman is? You don't know who Corey Feldman is? Guys, I'm about to recycle a JonTron joke, but... Have you heard of Jesus? Have you heard of Jesus? This man is Jesus! Resurrected from the dead to save us from our horrible movie sins. Uh, I usually don't give context on movies like this, but this, this actor probably, he needs some context. Corey Feldman is an actor that rose to prominence in his role in The Goonies. He was one of the little kids in there, and he was also in Stand By Me, I think. He was one of the little kids that was, uh, uh, allegedly raped by Michael Jackson in the 80s. So because of that, the guy has maintained a pretty still, uh, pretty, uh, stagnant fame status throughout the years. Uh, just imagine Macaulay Culkin, someone who peaks very, very early in life in his acting career. But instead of just uh, fading into obscurity like Macaulay did, uh, Corey decides to do music. And not just any music. This kind of music. You saw that, right? I'm not... I'm not freaking crazy. That's... that's real. That's what this man does. Popular YouTube music review channel The Needle Drop gave his album a not good out of 10, which is basically a zero out of 10, and called it the worst music album of the decade. This guy's... he's pretty famous. He's... he's top-tier meme status in internet culture, and here he is and his first film in what seems like forever. I'm looking at his Wikipedia page right now. No, I'm not. I did that before the episode started. <laughs> but really, this is one of the few movies he's been in in the past 10 years. 30 minute short film directed by Joe Dante. I'm expecting pure cheese. Top level cheese, baby. If I don't get the cheese, I don't want the movie. Without any further ado, let's check it out, boys. So, here's a riddle for all my closest friends. Is 
it better to kill yourself or to let your enemies destroy you? So this movie begins how it probably ended in real life with uh, Corey Feldman killing himself. But in reality, he's this rock star who kills himself because he's unsatisfied with his work and music. And all these people are coming to his house to uh, witness his funeral and see what he's going to leave him in his will. And I'm sure it's going to turn out very, very bloody. <laughs> this movie sh You know, there's nothing more that annoys me about a scene when a character is introduced and all that they do is say the names of other characters, even though they already know their fudging name. <sighs> I can't curse. I want this video monetized. So was I. His songs killed. Ha ha ha! Ha ha ha! Killed. So basically every character in this movie, other than Corey Feldman, is a complete douchebag, a porn star, or someone who's really greedy that Johnny's trying to take vengeance of. Basically your stereotypical horror movie characters in every sense of the word. And honestly, uh, there's no real reason to root for any of them to get out alive. <laughs> Got that ass, boy. To Dr. Larry Bellows, my personal shrink. The man who convinced me to get electroshock therapy so that you could control me and then write a book and then go on Oprah and finally get laid. <laughs> why, why get laid after Oprah? Was the dude a virgin before that or something? Did Oprah uh, have sex with him? What the hell are you trying to say here, Corey? Whoa, 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 oh my god, Corey, no, Corey, don't do it, don't do it, Corey. Jammed. No signal! Oh my god, it's jam jammed. Who the who the hell says that a signal is jammed, dude? My phone's jammed. You're not you're not dipping it in jelly or anything. The signal is blocked, man. There is no signal. You can't jam a phone, dude. Plan B. Now I'll call a cab. And no way out. Alright. Who's coming? I'm with you, Doc. Just thought I'd point out what a poor and uh, yeah, illogical line read that was. I, I know a way out. Who's coming? Right before he goes into a phone booth. Spence? What the hell is that, dude? I mean, I know it's probably, uh, it doesn't make any sense to call any attention to one specific line read, but, uh, yeah, that one was bad. I hate to say it, dude, but you've been watching him be electrocuted for a solid 30 seconds without doing anything. The fucker is dead. Like, he's fried. Come, come, yeah. It's 
empty. <sighs> but maybe I should be excited that this is one of the only moments in the movies a character acts with emotion. But come on, man. Even this porn stars have to job. act sometimes. That that wasn't even a line reading. That wasn't even words off of a page. That was a blob of a fleshy substance using their vocal cords to make noise. That wasn't acting, fucker. But after this point in the movie, all the characters decide to split up and search for clues because it's a shitty B-horror movie. So of course they do. And they all die in really convoluted and uh, uninteresting ways. They're not even visually interesting. There aren't even some good gore effects. It's just zombie Corey Feldman walking around killing people because he put a zombie African spell on himself. Because African people do voodoo and shit like that. Good job, movie. I lied. See, this, this hoe bag just gets her throat cut. That's it. That's all he does. Come on, sing it for me. I mean, this part's a little kinky, but I mean, that's, that's about it. You need to stop looking at the camera, you cheesy son of a bitch. I see why you haven't been in movies lately. Basically, the only guy left is his black manager who decides to do this to him. You know, maybe I'm just sick of this freaking movie and I'm exhausted of all of its stupidity and the boringness that led up to this, but actually that part's kind of clever a little bit. It kind of seems like it's making a point, like it's a satire of the music industry and how old people keep coming back to perform music even though they're out of their prime. And this does seem like good character motivation at least, like it does seem like something the manager would do. It's a pretty realistic in that sense and uh, I kind of like it. Oh yeah, this is the last scene in the movie, by the way. Five percent commission, not ten. <laughs> That's such a random ass line to leave the movie on, dude. What the fuck's wrong with you, Corey Feldman? You piece of untalented, washed up garbage. So, all right, guys, that was Splatter. And let me tell you, the only thing about that movie that splatters is the box office projections. Hey, yo! <sighs> this film it, it wasn't released in theaters, so that joke doesn't make any logical sense, actually. The movie is bad, though. Despite the fact that there are a few scenes in the beginning that are so bad they're funny and that the ending leaves a pretty good taste in my mouth from the biting satire that comes from it, overall... Uh, the majority of the middle film, about 15 minutes in the middle, I'd say, is just pure schlock. And not even in the good sense that you can enjoy it. All of the gore is obvious and uninspired. All of the death scenes are so generic and there's nothing unique that comes from any of them. Honestly, I look at this movie as wasted potential. Where the entire thing could have been like the last two minutes and it could have been a satire on the music industry, most of it is just... Cliche after cliche after cliche. So, my final rating for the movie Splatter, starring Corey Feldman and directed by Joe Dante, is going to be a 3.669 out of 10. And I'm going to keep the ratings in the descriptions below to see which move, so you can see which movies I prefer over the other movies. And that's going to do it for this episode, guys. Make sure you comment below what movie I should review next in this series. And uh, once I hit like 
you know, a million subscribers, a billion subscribers, I'll start a Patreon and you can start requesting on there, right guys? So make sure to get me to a billion subscribers real quick. That'll help me out a lot. And check out my other videos on your boy's channel. That's all I got for you. Satire Goat, ow.